Well, welcome to summer season, folks. We got another uh, grand design Imagine we're working on. Got some solar panels there ready to go. Got a new scaffold. Just finished that up. And uh, if you take a look around here, we still got some snow. But it's gonna be almost 80 today here in Minnesota. So let's take a look at what we're doing. Uh, well, let's start here. So uh, we're gonna be putting 600 amp hours of those slim case batteries in here. Uh, we'll take a look at the ones we're using this year. They're a little bit different than last year, but still the same size. And uh, anyway, one of the challenges is these grand designs, they are gluing right in here. So that means when we start to pull this off, it starts to rip. So. I think we're going to end up doing it. We may do this in all of them now. Um, we're just going to cut a new piece of wood, cover it with indoor or outdoor carpet, and we're just going to get rid of this all together, just remount all the components. And that way it's mounted with screws. You can take it in and out. If you ever need to service anything without a problem and not deal with this garbage. So they're getting the uh, full treatment, like I said, uh, 600 hours of amp hours of battery. The MultiPlus... Uh, doing another, well, we got six panels here, so 1,200 watts of solar up there, upgraded solar charger. But then inside, the tricky part here is going to be trying to get the display mounted here. Normally, I try and figure out what's the path that we can take. So uh, let's start here in the bedroom. That's where our converter is. So... I'd love to be able to go from the roof of uh, that bay there, which is right down here, but we're not going to be able to do that. We're going to have to go under the belly and then pop up there into that compartment. Hopefully, there's no water tank there. We'll find out. <clears throat> then here, probably going to have to do the same thing. We're probably going to have to pop up through the floor because I don't see any other way to get into here. Normally, I'd say, well, we can get underneath... Uh, all the utilities here underneath the shower and then around however that's solid right there so we're not gonna be able to get through this wall but this this wall here I haven't felt anything in it I think we should be able to do that trick is gonna be taking off all these trim pieces and keeping it looking good but we've been getting good at that so that's the plan there so, uh, I'm going to get after this. The nice thing is here, I can just rip this out. I don't even have to worry about keeping it looking good. So, uh, we'll check in when we get a little bit further along. All right, so we got that, uh, that panel out. And uh, just to make it clear, this is why we love doing this, is all this clear space can be used for batteries. Now, obviously, we got to build a little platform here. We did that before in another video. You can check on our channel for that. Um, you can see all this space here. It's pretty, for the most part empty. And uh, why not use it? And we're going to put the, all the inverters and stuff there. And the inverter, all the, the board. And then the, uh, like I said, the not fun part is going to be punching down and dealing with that. This is later today. Look at that snow. It's just melting away on us. All right. Let's uh, do a quick evening update on where we're at. I uh, got this uh, all pulled out. I don't know, maybe it doesn't look a whole lot different, except I put the supports in. You can see them here. They're back behind this insulation. You probably noticed there's insulation here before there wasn't. That was actually insulation that was over there, and there wasn't insulation here. It was almost like they said, oh, so many square feet of insulation is to be put here but it doubled up over there and it was missing here completely so go figure i don't know i don't want to throw too many stones there but come on grand design all right uh so the other thing i've been doing got the belly pan here pulled down if you're ever curious on uh the great wiring job they do take a look here but it does the job 
So uh, the reason why I pulled that down was to run the HDMI and USB cable for the Serbo GX. I'll show you where that's coming out. So I can't exactly tell you why, but I really, well, no, I know why I like these, but uh, these are called aircraft bits, I believe, and I don't know why they're called aircraft bits, but this is like a 1 8 inch foot long drill bit. And what it's useful for is when I took that off over there to see where the, there's a black tank right here and it's about, right here is where it's at. So there's not much room. So what I ended up doing was I had to actually kind of drill at an angle there to get a pilot hole for the, for the bigger bit and then made a hole there going sideways into the, uh, into the wall. And then from there, straight shot up to there, no problem. So that was a little bit tricky, but yeah, just drilled down and I had to go at an angle like this to miss the tank down here. Let's take a look. You can definitely see there is not much room for air. So that's what I had to do there. So I think I might uh, actually mount the servo today, get the wires run, and uh, then I can button that wall back up. And then uh, we'll keep going on there. We'll probably put together the board maybe this evening. And then, uh, yeah, we'll keep after it. So here we are, day two on the Grand Design Imagine. And got some work done last night. Got a little late, but got uh, these batteries put in here. Going with the rich solar, 200 amp hour. They have low temp charge protection. Uh, really good deal. I really like these. Specifically, <clears throat> again, because of how skinny they are. They slide right in there. We built that little platform. And it fits right there. This is within the original footprint. Haven't moved these at all. Got the uh, board in here. Got that started. Got one of the AC lines run, working on the others. And uh, yeah, we're gonna run that up above there, the main DC cables. Let's go take a look at what we got going on on the other side. So in here, this is the, uh, just took off this cover. This is where all your water stuff is. And there's a little passageway right there, you can see. That's where we're running the AC lines uh, to and from, as well as the HDMI and USB for the servo. Here's what we got on the board here. Got our main fuse, servo, got the disconnect there, and the uh, 150 by 70 charge controller. It's gonna pair real well with the uh, 1200 watts of solar. Hopefully, we'll get to test that. But let's go inside, take a look at what I'm working on there. I'm wrapping up uh, making the final AC mains connection, and I have changed this up since uh, I last did a video on how I do this. I'm using mechanical connections now rather than the blue wire nuts, which I believe the blue wire nuts work fine, but I like this better. It's a little bit more expensive, but I think this is a better solution. And so these are these aluminum splices. And aluminum is very conductive. It's just a little bit less conductive than copper. It's just fine, this is what these are for. And then uh, cover them with heat shrink tubing. So I have heat shrink ready to go on each of the ends. And then when I connect them up, put them on there and shrink them down. But yeah, this is a nice mechanical connection. And what I've found is I can actually go two to one in these. I can take two of those six gauge wires and put them in there. And that works really good when I'm doing two inverters. So again, I, uh, you know, disabling the converter is just as easy is just as easy as unplugging it from here. That's super easy. Got the new wire run into the panel here, so we're good to go there. Still gotta secure it down on that, but I usually wait to do that to the end. And wind more stress on things than there needs to be. And then uh, after that, we can button this up. And uh, we're in the home stretch. Here's what this ends up looking like real quick with both of them connected. 
I always do a pull test on each of these to make sure they work good and then heat shrink goes over it shrink it up and there's going to be a little bit more but I use always the uh, there's going to be some extra heat shrink tubing but I use the kind with glue in it so I just kind of pinch it together once it's hot and it makes a good insulated seal on that so here it is all uh, heat, heat shrunk up I feel like this is a really good safe connection that can handle vibration and whatever the next however long this RV exists I think this connection will be safe and secure so I'm in here and I'm making the uh, I'm gonna make the what I call the coach DC main that's where we take the DC system here and couple it with the DC system in the RV and let's see if we can zoom in here so you can see I see this all the time this is how I pulled this off you got your lug you got a washer yes that's a copper washer but still the lug should be in direct contact with the shunt. I don't know what's going on at these places. This is grand design here. I don't know. I mean, there shouldn't be a ton of amps flowing through this, but still, if you're doing it there, where else are you doing it? All right, we're all finished up with this grand design Imagine. Let's take a look at it and, and uh, see what we did. Here's the inside in this uh, pass-through bay here. We got the uh, the new board up with vents for the batteries so that uh, they can hopefully stay a little bit warmer in the cold. And we do have the temperature sensor ran to it so we can monitor what that is. And uh, we ended up replacing this board with a new one covered in fabric because uh, Grand Design decided to glue the that other panel on and just wouldn't come off in one piece. Here's a. Uh, the install and everything, I think it came out really good. Got the uh, 150 by 70 charger, and that's working out good. The links with the lights, 600 amp disconnect, main fuse, multi plus, 3000. It's working good. Really like how that turned out. Let's take a look inside. Got uh, all the trim and everything put back together there. You wouldn't even know we were in there. And. Got the got the uh, the touch screen working right in here. Fill that up with a little bit of spray foam in there, just to make sure no critters or anything get in there. And uh, gonna leave a couple of cards for them in here. Got that all buttoned up. And uh, didn't really have to do much anything over there. So let's take a look up top on solar. We added 1,200 watts. Well, actually 1,300, but we'll get to that. This is how it turned out. And uh, what we ended up doing, so they have the stock uh, Furion 165 watt panel, which Furion wants $600 for. I don't know why. All right, hopefully the wind's not too bad. Uh, so what we have is three panels here in series then three additional panels in series those are then connected in parallel up there at the controller or at the uh, main port but we didn't want to waste this $600 panel so what we decided to do is pair it with an additional 100 watt and essentially they end up working the Furion ends up being really a 100 watt panel but it's better than nothing uh, the way it ends up working. So these combine for about a 200 watt panel. Then what I did is I ran that panel in parallel with this panel. And that might seem kind of strange, but the reason for that is in situations like now, if you take a look, this air conditioner is shading this panel. So because it's in parallel with it, if it were in full sun, but we got some shading going on from the trees, what would happen is this panel would be bypassed and these two panels would make up for the difference in that one. And this string of three could run at 100% capacity where typically it wouldn't. So really what we're doing is we're kind of backstopping partial shade conditions from our air conditioner. Now what we don't have is the same situation on this one where when we get partial shade from right here, um, this string is gonna degrade a little bit, but it's not bad. I took a look at it. 
uh, once a little bit of shade gets to that corner, it knocks down maybe 50 to 100 watts, but it's not the end of the world. But uh, I did test this yesterday. I purposely shaded this and the output did not go down. I shaded those ones, the output didn't go down. So I feel like that's a, that's a win and that's a success. And that's one way you can leverage the panel that's already there um, to give yourself a little bit more shade tolerance. So that's, uh, that's the long and the short of it here. So I think that wraps this one up. If uh, you need any help on your camper and, or RV or golf cart or well, off grid, whatever, uh, we'd love to help you out. We love putting batteries in tight spots and making the most out of the space you have. Um, give us a call, email, text, whatever. Love to help you out. Check us out, sodasolar.com. Thanks, bye.